Hello, my name's Jeff from Decal Ranch. A couple months ago, I signed up for the Sane Smart testing program. I thought there is not a chance in the world that I would get accepted to test anything. But, doesn't hurt to ask. Well, about a couple weeks to maybe a month after I signed up, got an email saying, hey, would you like to test something? Have you ever tried a resin-based printer? And I replied back, no, but... That's something I'd like to, you know, one day try, back and forth, back and forth. And they said, sounds great. All you need to do is uh, give us a nice, honest review of what you think and post videos on it. I told them exactly what I was going to do. They said, sounds great. And about two to three weeks later, I have a printer sitting on my table. And here's my review. Right, you can see the box it comes in is a hefty box. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take off this monstrous piece of foam, which was nice to see. They do not skimp on the packaging for the printer because it's not a light box. That's what I was really surprised about. Uh, I did very little research because I wanted this experience to be a full-fledged. This is my first time messing with the resin printer. Um, printer pops out. There's an additional box that I set on the table. And that's about it. I, I was really surprised on coming from an Ender background where I have to put my Enders together. Uh, even my Ender 3 Max, while it wasn't a ton of parts, you still have, I don't know, 20 screws, uh, bolts you have to deal with in the process. This was kind of surprising where I, I think I spent more time taking off the plastic off the machine than I did actually setting the machine up. So here's the quick start guide. I think these are the gloves, some tools, power strip or power cord, scrapers. There's the power brick, I guess. That's what you would call it. A power adapter, as the uh, guide says. Then I wasn't 100% sure what that was at first. <laughs> Because I didn't read the quick start guide just yet, but it is the filter paper to filter out your resin, I'm assuming. So here I'm going to go and just double check, make sure everything's here. You can see I'm pointing, going, yep, 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 yep. So everything showed up, which was nice. Uh, I have had a Ender, I think, miss a piece. Um, the thumb drive there was the USB stick, uh, teeny tiny little USB stick, but makes sense. Doesn't need to be one of the monster ones since it's going to slide into the side of the printer. You can, I tell you what, the printer weighs a lot more than I anticipated. My, you know, coming from the under background, they're not light printers, but they're this this thing. I I read it was twelve and a half kilos which turns around to be about 27 and a half pounds. I was floored at how heavy it was. And the box, I think, is what, 15 kilos total? So that is, uh, there's some junk in the trunk in this box. So as I go on unwrap it, I'm going to read you some of the stats on this printer. Uh, I've looked at resin printers uh, in the past, but most of them have a very small build volume. Well, this one's the complete opposite. It has a 7.5 inch by 4.7 inch by 7.9 inch build, build volume. That is a 192 millimeter by 120 millimeter by 200 millimeter. I mean, that is knocking on the Ender 3 build volume. I know it's not ex clo exactly on it, but that's not far off. Uh, at least on the X and the Z or Z. So it's it's got a hefty build volume. It's got an ultra high def 8.9 inch 4K LCD with 3840 by 2400 resolution. It has an XY resolution of 50 microns and a layer height down to 25 microns. Now I actually had to look up what a micron was. A micron is, I, I, you know, I've heard the term, but I didn't know exactly what the true definition is. It's a unit of length equal to one millionth of a meter. So 50 microns 
would actually be a half of a millimeter. It also has a combination of a dual linear rail and an anti-backlash assembly. Now you can see in this angle the dual the linear rails and the where the the carriage is uh, with the bearings attached to it. That is a hefty size. That is something that probably I would use on my Ender 3 uh, because that build plate assembly is a nice stout assembly. You know, the overall printer size is 280 millimeters by 240 millimeters by 465 millimeters. That's a tall boy. It has a three and a half inch touchscreen. When you go and see here in a little bit when I start to attempt my first print, it's it's big enough. It's not necessarily fat finger person friendly, which is my issue, but it's pretty much the size of my first cell phone smartphone at least so it, it it is easy to read uh, we'll get to that here in a few minutes uh, you know it's got a 60 watt power supply uh, and it, it does allow for two slicing software which is the flash forge the flash dl print and and then i'm sure i'm pronouncing this wrong but chit to chit you box uh, and that is the software i actually download and used one thing i'm amazed about is how heavy the build plate is. It is not like, I, sh I should have weighed it. Uh, and also the importance of that knob. Very important to tighten that down. I may have found out the hard way. Uh, right now I am on all step two and three of step one is plug it in. Step two is install the build plate step three is tighten it down we are halfway done with installation step four uh, loosen the screws and step five is just make sure the plate is loose enough that you can move it and here I'm just getting it loose enough but not so you can see it just drops down Got to loosen up a couple more. It needs to be, you don't want it completely out, but you want it free enough that I, you know, I can see I can easily lift it up and down. So then I just did it one more little turn on all four. And the next step is to remove the resin box. Also hold on to the screw when you turn it upside down uh, because it will fall out. It's not in. As you can see here, I, uh, whoop. <laughs> so now I put all the parts back on the table magically grab my piece of paper tell my son leave me alone I'm playing Minecraft and simply just you put the paper on the screen and lower the plate on hit the home button and make sure all four corners are flat once all four corners are flat you will then just go in and simply tighten her up. See, I'm just making sure all four corners are touching. The front left corner wasn't fully touching. I just had to give it a little, give a little, little nudge, and tightened her up. Once you get all four bolts tightened back up, you know you're happy with the resistance. Tighten it up. Then it's time to put the resin box back on. You know, it it kind of has a groove that it just snaps into, and then you have the two screws, uh, you know, make them snug. I would assume not over snug, but just a nice tight fit. And it's time to grab the resin. All right, we're gonna switch angles here. I ended up buying Sane Smart uh, UV printer resin. Got it off Amazon thousand milliliter bottle it's about thirty seven dollars um, it says you know 405 nm general purpose photopolymer curing resin for 3d lcd msla resin printer in gray uh, i think gray was just the first color i saw i figured out what what the hey let's just grab it. Uh, it actually it might have been the cheapest but probably just the first one i saw Probably should have used gloves here. 
I'm not sure how toxic the resin is, but it has an odor. Not a strong odor, but it's, I mean, it would be similar to uh, a different smell of how uh, an FDM printer is burning, like PLA. It, there's, it's not a horrible odor, but there is an odor. So if you are sensitive to smell, make sure you're in a nice ventilated room. I was surprised at how really little it took to fill up. I, I was, you know, it's a, it, there is a line on it. I know it's just out of view here. You can kind of see it where it's just it his max level. So don't, you know, you don't want to overfill it when the plate submerges itself because if not you're gonna have a big old mess on your hand so I, I i went just below the the fill line and at this point we're ready to print so adjust camera angle to three and now i'm just grazing the book and i that's it those are the next three steps to just start printing i was kind of floored it's not that i was expecting more i just really wasn't expecting this whole process to be this easy uh, one saint smart or the the guide is pretty you know here's what you do here's what you do here's what you do and there's just not a whole lot to it i no i, I didn't look into resin printers because i assumed it was a lot harder than it really is so get the old flash drive in go to print and then this is where I realized that when you go to the next page in the book, that's where it talks about the software and that I need to slice it. Oops. So I'm not even going to go in the cheat you box. It, it, it talks about it in the book. You could almost do a whole series probably on this software. I don't really know it, and I'm just trying to get to print. That's all I want to do at this point. So I dropped the test deer file in, which there's no way I could print that on any of my enders. Uh, sliced it click save and now i come back here and then this is where it helps to keep reading in the book that they give you with the printer because it says to make sure you save it as a dot svgx which i know i did not so back downstairs i go and now i saved it right and there we go flash forge deer two hours 55 minutes and that's about how long it took it took roughly two hours and 55 minutes i can't believe this is what 20 minutes 15 minutes and i cut away bits and bobs uh, you can see it's in the process of doing it i did take a peek it said not to i, could, I couldn't help myself and then th you know roughly three hours later i let it drip for a while and here we go and i could not believe how tiny those antlers are uh, so strap on my gloves. Now this part here, I'm actually going to have to research more uh, on the kind of the procedure of getting the excess resin off the build plate without making a mess everywhere and how to, well now with this one, it wasn't that hard because of the thin, I'm going to say, I don't know if that's a raft or it's supposed to be there, but it was easy to pop off. But I will need to research the whole procedure of removing a print without creating an absolute mess. Now, I'm just going to sit her down on some paper towels and use the metal scraper. You know, the, the tip of that is tapered uh, and the deer popped right off. Now let's get this thing cleaned up. I, I didn't record it, but I did rinse it in alcohol for about three minutes, four minutes. Made sure all the excess resin was cleaned off, and then I put it on my newly purchased Easy Bake Oven UV curing station here. Uh, it, it was on the cheap because I didn't know if this is something I'm going to be hardcore doing. I had to take a peek on it just to kind of see what it looked like inside, and here's the results. I am floored by the results, how good this turned out. All I did was import, slice, export. Just at the settings I needed to. This, the small detail is something I've never experienced, you know, because filament printers, 
I'm sure someone knows how to do it. I don't. Uh, I can't believe, like, the antlers are so small, and they look so good. It's so weird to see something this small come out of a printer. And the ease of doing it, that's what's wild. So what I ended up doing is I want to make molds. And with, so there's the balloon dog I, I've attempted. But with the FDM, I get all those tiny lines. And there's a unicorn dust mica. But, you know, I touched it. You can see little scrape marks on the face. I touched it with a paper towel. Lesson learned. Leave it alone. So I redid it, and then you can see how much smoother the inside is. But there's still a little bit of schmagma here and there that I need to... I'm sure it's something on my end I need to figure out. Uh, but we'll get there. So far, so good. Very pleased with the results. Uh, now there's my screw-up of... Oops, I forgot to tighten the knob. And this is what happens. It slid on me. Well, new mistake. Lesson learned. Make sure we bolt this thing down. Very pleased with the results so far, though. So what do I think of the Flash Forge 8.9-inch photo resin printer, 4K large format LCD MSLA 3D printer? One, that could be the longest name I've ever seen for a printer. And two, for someone who's never I mean, even researched, really, resin printers, other than a graze of like, oh, what do they do? I'm extremely pleased with the ease of getting this up and running based off an FDM printer. Not that they're hard, but this really required... I mean, it was like 15 minutes I was working. If I knew what I was doing, it would have been probably like 10 minutes and off the off the races. And also how easy it was to get a file in, an STL in, or... If you, I think there's, I think it takes a couple OBJ, maybe a few others, but to get those files in, especially ones I've already made, slice them and export them back out. I need to just dig deeper into which I have started on like a proper way to do supports and clean up, post cleanup, because not everything I want to paint. You know, if I was painting, then it's you know sand it down and off off we go. But uh, I would like to thank Sane Smart for sending this to me. Uh, this is the first time I've done anything like this. Hopefully I did it justice. But this is a uh, it's a solid printer. I mean, I don't have anything to compare it to other than my Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, Ender 3 Max, or my CR10 V3. You know, I have those five printers. And I'd have that to compare it to in that aspect where those printers tend to be you're always babysitting them you're always kind of having the look even after the beds level you're still dealing with the occasional yeah i don't feel like sticking i haven't had that issue yet fingers crossed i'm gonna say i don't think you can go wrong with this printer i'll probably look into down the road maybe getting a full cleaning kit but right now i'm just using a a tub with some alcohol in it and a spray bottle to work on cleaning it. This definitely opens up the door for me expanding the possibility of what I could 3D print. Now, I'd like to toss in here at the very end a, a little side note. Uh, I did this when I got review once I got home from vacation. Uh, the bottle of the resin took a little bit to get to come in. But in, when I got home from vacation, it, it, our basement flooded, so I got to do this review for my kitchen table instead of down in my office area with a flooded basement. All the carpets and everything had to be pulled up and thrown away, and that was fun. Just wanted to toss that in there of why I, I voiced over this, because the acoustics in our kitchen's horrible. I started recording. And I heard myself and went, yep, I'm just going to dub over because it'll sound a thousand times better. If you made it this far, thank you for watching this and have a wonderful day.